Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to look at arithmetic sequences. So in this first part of the video we're going to look at what's called the common difference of an arithmetic sequence and be able to find it, how to write terms of an arithmetic sequence, how to use a formula to determine the general term or sometimes called the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, and in the next video we'll look at how to find a formula for the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence. So in this section, we already know what sequences are from the previous video, but now we're going to use sequences to model situations where the terms are increasing by a constant additive amount from one term to the next. If you have this special type of sequence, it's called an arithmetic sequence. So let's start with an example. This bar graph shows the amount of money that Americans spent on their pets rounded to the nearest billion dollar each year between 2001 and 2007. So let's notice the value of the amount spent on their pets in America. So the sequence of amounts spent on pets in America increases by 2 from one term to the next. So in 2001, the amount spent on pets in, in the United States was $29 billion. And then in 2002, it became $31 billion. And then $33 billion, then $35 billion. Up until 2007, it was $41 billion. So these amounts spent gives us a sequence of amounts, 29, 31, 33, 35, 37, 39, and 41. Well, this sequence of numbers increases by a constant additive amount. You need to add two from one term to get to the next term. So this is called an arithmetic sequence. And the amount that you are increasing from one term to next is called the common difference. So the common difference in this sequence is 2, which was representing $2 billion. So let's start with the definition of an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence of numbers where each term after the first term differs by the previous term by a constant amount. So you're adding the same amount from one term to get to the next term, and then get to the next term, and so on. So the difference between consecutive terms is called the common difference, and we're going to denote this with a lowercase d. So the common difference, d, is found by taking any two successive terms and subtracting them to get the common difference. So let's try out this first problem. What is the common difference for each of the following arithmetic sequences? So they're already telling us that the terms differ by a constant additive amount. So the first sequence, 142, 146, 150, 154, 158. It doesn't matter which two consecutive terms or successive terms you choose, but choose two of them. Let's choose 142 and 146. If you subtract 146, subtract 142, this gives you the common difference. So 4 is the common difference for this sequence. As long as you know it's an arithmetic sequence, you can take any two consecutive terms. Let's try the next sequence. Negative 5, negative 2, 1, 4, 7. Again, take any two terms, consecutive terms, if it's an arithmetic sequence, and subtract them. 7 subtract 4, and you get 3. So that's the common difference for this second sequence. And in the third sequence, 8, 3, negative 2, negative 7, and negative 12, uh, I'm going to avoid the negative numbers. Let's choose the first two. The common difference would be 3 subtract 8, because the value started at 8 and it decreased to 3. So the common difference is negative 5. You're adding negative 5 
from one term to the next. And again, this is called the common difference. So again, choose any two successive terms to calculate the common difference. common difference is always to know with the lowercase d. So let's look at the graphs. The following graphs actually represent the last two arithmetic sequences that we talked about. The common difference in the second sequence was 3, so that's this graph on the left. Notice that your first term, which is the initial term, a sub 1, is negative 5. And the sequence increased by 3. So that means the common difference was d equals 3. This sequence was increasing in value. So this is called an increasing sequence. So it should look like the points are rising as you go to the right, if it's an increasing sequence. On the other hand, the last sequence that we looked at, the common difference was negative 5. So we were adding a negative amount from one term to get to the next term. So the common difference was negative 5 for this sequence. We started at the first term, which was equal to 8 and we were adding negative 5 to get to the next term and then we got the second term and we subtracted 5 again to get to the next term and so on. So it looks like the points are falling from left to right so this is called a decreasing sequence. The one important note that you should consider with these graphs is that the graphs are a set of discrete points. We saw that from the last video with sequences and their graphs. But, with an arithmetic sequence, it looks like the points, if you have a common difference of 3, it looks like the points are rising from left to right on a straight line. Same thing if the common difference was negative 5. It looks like the points are falling from left to right, but they are falling, it looks like, on a straight line, a constant amount. So it's going to look like a linear functions graph, except you do not have the points connected. It's just a set of discrete points. So the first term in an arithmetic sequence is a sub 1. We're going to come up with a general formula so that we can find out, say, the 18th term without knowing the previous 17 terms. So then we're going to get what's called the general term. So the first term is a sub 1 in this arithmetic sequence. Keep in mind, it has to be an arithmetic sequence. How do you get the second term? Well, you take the first term and you add the common difference. So you take the first term and you add the common difference d to get a sub 2. Well then you get a sub 3 by taking a sub 2 and adding the same amount, d. So this gives us a recursion formula. It says if you want to find out the nth term, a sub n, you take the one before it, a sub n minus 1, the n minus first term, and you add the common difference. So this means to find the nth term, in an arithmetic sequence then you add the common difference which is d in this case the number d to the previous term So if you take the 18th term and you want to find it, this recursion formula says you need to know the 17th term, a sub 17, and you add the common difference to get the 18th term. So let's try example 1 with this in mind. Determine the following arithmetic sequences if you are given the first term and the common difference. Number 1, the first term is 6, 
And the common difference, D is negative 2. We're going to find the entire sequence of numbers, not just the first five or six terms. So we're going to use curly brackets, a sub n, to represent the entire sequence. So it's the set of numbers that start at 6. And now you add negative 2 to get to the next term. So 6 subtract 2, 4. 4 subtract 2 to get the third term, 2. 2 subtract 2, 0. 0 subtract 2, negative 2 subtract 2, and so on. It's going to continue the same pattern. So use the dot, 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 or the ellipsis to continue that, that same sequence. So number 2, let's try the same thing. a sub 1 this time is equal to negative 7. And the common difference is 3. So notice that the last problem, the common difference was negative, and the sequence is decreasing in value. This time the sequence has a common difference of 3, so the sequence will be increasing. It starts at negative 7, add 3. Well, that gives you negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3, 2. 2 plus 3, 5. 5 plus 3, 8. And you get the gist. So the sequence will continue on indefinitely, and it's an increasing sequence this time. All right, one more of these, number three. Let's start with the first term being a fraction, five halves, and the common difference is negative a half. So even though these are not whole numbers, they still work the same way if it's an arithmetic sequence. The first term is five halves. Well, to get the second term, you add negative a half. So five halves subtract negative a half is four halves. Then you have three halves when you subtract another half. Subtract half again, you get two divided by two, and then one half, and then zero, and then negative half, and so on. Well, keep in mind that some of the terms you can simplify. Five halves is five halves. Four halves is two, three halves. Two divided by two is one. Um, one half, zero, negative a half, and so on. So that's the sequence simplified. So now that we know how to find a sequence of terms and an arithmetic sequence, we're going to find the general term next. So an arithmetic sequence, you can determine it by taking the first term and adding the common difference, as we just did in example one. So if you know the first two terms of an arithmetic sequence, then you can find a formula for the nth term. So that's denoted a sub n. Let's see if we can find a pattern. Here are the first six terms in an arithmetic sequence. The first term is a sub 1. The second term is a sub 2. Well, you take the previous term and you add the common difference, d. a sub 3. You take the previous term, a sub 2, and you add another d. So a sub 1 plus d plus another d. So that's a sub 1 plus 2d. Fourth term. Well, you take a sub 3, which is a1 plus 2d, and you add another common difference to get to the fourth term. Well, that's the first term plus three common differences that we added to get to the fourth term. And then the pattern will continue indefinitely. So what's the pattern that you notice? Is there a relationship between the coefficient in front of the d and the subscript of the term? There is. The coefficient of the common difference, which is d, is 1 less than the subscript. So what that means is that if you want to find the nth term, you could start with the first term and add d, 1d, to get to the second term. You add 2d's to get to the third term. You add 3d's to get to the fourth term. Well, if you want to get to the nth term, you take the first term and you add d n minus 1 times. It's 1 less than the subscript. So if the subscript is n, then you add n minus 1 of the d's. Well, this is not a recursion formula. This is a general term that we can just plug in any value of n that we want, and we can find out the nth term, knowing what the common difference is and the first term. So this is the definition of a general term for an arithmetic sequence only. The nth term, or the general term, 
of an arithmetic sequence can be found if you know the first term is a sub 1, that number, and the common difference is the number d. Well then the formula is a sub n is equal to the first term a sub, a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, and d is the common difference. So let's try out the next two examples. So example 2, find the common difference, the first six terms, the nth term, the eighth term. Here's the sequence, 4, negative 3, negative 10, negative 17, and then negative 24, and so on. This is an arithmetic sequence. So let's find out the common difference first. The common difference is denoted as a D. So we were doing these kind of problems in example 1. Choose any two successive terms. I don't know, let's choose negative 3 and negative 10. So if you want to find out the common difference, take the new term, negative 10, and subtract the old term, negative 3. So that's negative 10 plus 3. So apparently you are subtracting 7 or adding negative 7 from one term to the next term to the next term and so on. So if we know the common difference now, we have five terms. Let's find the sixth term. The sixth term is denoted a sub 6. Well, using the recursion formula for arithmetic sequences, you take the fifth term and you add the common difference. Well, that would be fifth term is negative 24, and the common difference is negative 7. So add negative 7. The sixth term would be negative 31. Now let's find the nth term, or the general term. So keep in mind, the general term is a formula that involves the variable n. So a sub n. Well, the formula was what we just passed up on the last page. It was a sub 1 the first term, plus n minus 1 d. So you add d n minus 1 times to the first term to get to the nth term. Well, the nth term would be, first term is given as 4. n minus 1, that is part of the variable, the coefficient. And the common difference we found out was negative 7. So times negative 7. So now simplify a sub n. Distribute the negative 7 through the parentheses and collect all your like terms, and you'll find out that the general term is negative 7n plus 11. So now we have a way to find out the eighth term without actually knowing the seventh term in the sequence. So let's find it. The eighth term can be found if you let n, the subscript, be 8. So it's negative 7 times 8 plus 11. Negative 56 plus 11 is negative 45. So that would be the eighth term in this sequence. So let's try example three. It's very similar. This time the sequence is not decreasing, it'll be increasing. Negative 2, 8, 18, 28, and so on. Find the common difference, the first six terms, the nth term, and the eighth term again. So let's start with the common difference. What does it look like the common difference is in this, this sequence? Well, I could choose negative 2 and 8, or I could also choose 18 and 28. As long as there are two successive terms, I can take the new term and subtract the old term and find the common difference. And it's 10 this time. So now let's find out the first six terms. We have to find the fifth term next, which is a sub 5. Well, you take the fourth term and you add the common difference. So the fourth term is 28 plus 10. You get 38 for the fifth term. Now let's try the sixth term. To find it, you need the fifth term, and you add the common difference. So that's 38 plus another 10. 48 is the sixth term. General term, or the nth term. The general term is a sub n, because it's an arithmetic sequence, it follows this formula, a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. a sub n is equal to the first term, negative 2, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 10. So you add 10, n minus 1 times, to get to the nth term when you start the first term. So now that we have a formula, 
we can find out any term that we want. Let's find out the eighth term. So again, just like the last problem, the eighth term would be when n equals 8. So negative 2 plus 8 minus 1 times 10. So that's negative 2 plus 7 times 10, which is negative 2 plus 70, or 68. So that would be the eighth term in the sequence. Oh, and also make sure that you simplify the general term. If you simplify by distributing the 10 through, you can also find out the nth term is 10n, then subtract 12. And you can also find the eighth term using this formula as well. That's simplified. All right, let's try one more example that's involving arithmetic sequences and the common difference. So we're going to use an arithmetic sequence in an application. The following graph shows the percentage of the United States population by race or ethnicity from the last census, 2010. So this is coming from the United States Census Bureau from 2010, and we're going to use the data that's provided to make a projection for 2050. So notice that in the bar graph, we are given the percentage based on race or ethnicity by white, Latino, or Latinx, African American, and then also Asian. So in 2010, 64% of the population in the United States um, considered white, 64%. And in 2050, the United States Census Bureau projects that to be 46%. 12% of the population was African American in 2010, and that's projected to increase to 15%. Latino or Latinx, 16% up to 30%, and then Asian American, 5 to 9%. So we're going to focus on the data that's given in 2010, which was 64% of the United States population was white or Caucasian. They're telling us in the problem that on average, this percentage will decrease by projections by 0.45% every year. So why is this describing an arithmetic sequence? Well, you are decreasing by a constant additive amount. You are decreasing by the same amount, 0.45% every year. So we're gonna have a sequence of numbers, sequence of percentages, that's gonna represent an arithmetic sequence. So part one, find a formula for the general term, or the nth term, of an arithmetic sequence that describes the percentage of the United States population that will be white in years after 2009. So let's start with the common difference because we need to know it before we can use the general term. So D is equal to 0.45%. The population decreases by 0.45% each year. So we have the common difference. Now we also need to know the first term. The first term is a sub 1, and we are starting in 2010, which was 64%. So the population, white, in 2010. Now we need a general term or an nth term. So if this is an arithmetic sequence, it follows this formula, a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So we have the first term and the common difference. We can figure out the formula. First term is 64. We're, all, we're going to assume that everything's percentages, so you can just drop the units. Plus n minus 1 is part of the formula, and the common difference is negative because the population percentages was decreasing. So negative 0.45. Again, keep it as 0.45 because it's already a percent. So now if you simplify by distributing the, the negative 0.45 through the parentheses, you'll find out that the sequence will be 64.45 subtract 0.45 times n, where n is the number of years after 2009. So there's the general formula. A sub n is equal to 64.45, subtract 0.45 times n. So now let's use this formula for part two. What percentage of the United States population 
will be projected to be white in 2030. So let's find out what the value of n would be. So n is 2030, subtract 2009, because it's years after 2009, so this would be um, 21 years. So now we have a way to find out what term in the sequence we need. We need the 21st term. Well, a sub 21 would be 64.45, subtract 0.45 times, you need to subtract 21 times 0.45 from 64.45, and this will be 55. And the units are percent, and this represents 55% of the population of the United States. is projected to be white in the year 2030. So this gives you an introduction of arithmetic sequences, the common difference, and also how to find out the general term if you know the common difference and the first term. So this is a good place to stop. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about how to find the sum of the first n terms of in an arithmetic sequence.